What's up kid family welcome back to the channel if you guys ever change anything on the vehicle suspension as far as lowering height camber arms everything has an effect on the handling of the vehicle the suspension geometry so if you keep watching you will see me adding camber bolts to the front of the vehicle and changing the vehicle's geometry for the better so stay tuned all right guys for those of you that don't know these are my 2012 si wheels Factory tire specs for this is a 215 45 17. When I was replacing these tires a few years ago, I decided to go up one size to 225 45 17. Ever since I went up a tire size, the handling has gotten worse and worse. And the reason for that, all that extra meat on the tire, there's more flex during turning. So my response has declined tremendously. I really changed the whole dynamic of the vehicle and I hate it. So in my last video, I re-greased all the suspension components, freshened them up, make sure they're good as new. And as you guys can see, I stripped one of these bolts right here. So instead of just going buy a new bolt and putting everything back together, we had some spare camber bolts we had laying around. We used these when we were stanced, when we were fitted. I'll throw in some pictures back in the day when I was rocking the Civic with all its glory. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna take off this top bolt and nut right here, replace it with the adjustable bolt right here. And if you guys are not familiar with camber arms, all they do is while turning the camber arm, this lobe will adjust the camber of the vehicle, meaning this whole knuckle assembly is either gonna go further in the vehicle or further out the vehicle. So you can adjust both that either camber in or camber out. And uh, it's pretty simple to do guys. I have a whole video that I'm gonna link below of the of this product. So you guys can take a look if you want more information of it. But for the most part, this is gonna be a simple video. We're gonna install it. I'm gonna show you how much camber it adds and hope you guys enjoy. So, so keep watching. Right, there's your old bolt we don't need to use that anymore what I'm gonna actually do before I take this out I'm gonna spray paint a uh, plasti dip actually this area right here so later when we camber in the vehicle you guys will be able to see the difference and how much camber we actually added so here I'm gonna use some plasti dip right here No big deal guys, I know what you're thinking. It's just plasti dip, this thing's gonna come right off. This way, once we push this metal knuckle assembly further in, we'll see exactly how much camber we got. Okay, so now you're probably wondering, how the hell do you install this? It's quite simple, what we're gonna do. Uh, basic Basics of this bolt, you have an arrow on top right here that shows you the highest point of the cam lobe. It's like a camshaft the highest point so what we're gonna do essentially we're gonna put this in washer is a special washer that comes with this you're gonna want to install it make sure this little nipple goes inside the shock tower assembly all right guys at this point I'm gonna turn this camber bolt in and you guys will be able to see by this white line here um, how much it's going in All right, guys, I'm going to stop right there. Um, if you guys noticed anything up to this point, you probably noticed I was doing it wrong. The reason is I was just testing you guys. I was, was going to see if you guys realized I was installing this wrong. So check it out. This little washer is actually supposed to go on that side. And then you tighten it up. So let's go ahead and fix that. For those of you guys that noticed this, good job. You know, I'm just trying to test you guys. Make sure you guys realize what's going on stay in tune with the video that's about it i ain't making no mistakes 
All right, guys, as you can see, we added that much negative camber, which is about 1.75 to 2 degrees negative camber. Right over here, you can see that the arrow is pointing inside to the towards the body, and we got the washer inside the body as well. It looked like this combination gave us the most negative camber. When I would do the arrow opposite to the washer, it seems like it would leave it into neutral position, OEM position. So this is the way you have to do it if you want negative... Uh, maximum negative camber as you can see by the plasti dip that we um, sprayed earlier that's how much degrees of camber we added I'm gonna go ahead jack the bottom of the hub up that way we can torque it down everything to spec 20 to 40 pound feet of torque and you know we want it under load so let's do that now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and then we're gonna go for a drive and see if this two degrees of negative camber really helps anything out. Ideally, you guys wanna run um, an alignment after this kind of suspension work cause you know, you do throw off some of the suspension geometry, the camber, the caster and etc. We are not gonna do that. We are just gonna pretty much drive it as is for now, see if there's any noise clunking issues and I'll give you the feedback on uh, the camber and the handling characteristics of the vehicle so stay tuned I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to notice but this is the zero camber side with the factory bolts and this is the camber side you can see how the wheel adjusts inward much more aggressively like this would be ideal if you're running an aggressive setup and you don't want to rub in the quarter panel I'm just doing it again just to see how it will handle how camber two degrees of camber is gonna affect your handling characteristics of the vehicle ideally if you guys are running this much camber most likely you're gonna get wear on the inner tires after some time because the tire is not sitting straight it's not using its flat surface it's being worn out more on the inside there's more load so that is something to consider. Again, I'm not getting alignment. I'm probably going to run this for a few weeks, see how it is. And then I might go back to factory zero camber just for the longevity of the car. But I'm doing this for you guys so you guys can see how it is, how to do it, how it feels like after the adjustment. Just snug it in a little bit. And as I'm tightening down, I'm making sure my... my uh, my angles don't change over here. As you can see, the camber arms are, camber bolts are installed. This is the way you do it if you want maximum camber. Now the shop is always gonna be able to fine tune it once you're on the alignment machine to your liking, whether you want negative two camber, negative one degree, or if you want positive degree to offset your vehicle's lowering springs or coilovers just to keep it nice and square, definitely take it to an alignment shop. But let's get in the car right now. Let's go for a test drive and I'll give you the initial impressions. All right, guys, we're getting out of the driveway now super hot today we got the ac rolling but uh so far steering wheel is pretty straight and again there's just no crazy uh no crazy turns or twists i can take right now just because it's about 3 p.m in the afternoon rush hour and we are in our little neighborhood here but i'm gonna give you guys initial impressions if i can even tell any initial impressions steering wheel does feel a little bit uh, harder to turn it's not as soft and when you're going in the turn I guess it feels a little stiffer and they show impressions again take a hard one here okay it did feel like it wanted to take that turn a little better Again, those tires are the main problem with this vehicle. This, the tires flex too much. So maybe by putting in more camber, and even though then the tires are flexing, they're gonna be more flat during the, the turn. Anyway, I'm gonna go to the store right now, just cause you guys, 
you guys seen that uh, the bolt we screwed up over here and the nut is warped we're gonna go ahead and get new nuts here just in case in the future we are gonna try to replace it okay we had about 30 slide steering uh, input does have a lot more uh, feedback just trying to see if I'm gonna get any kind of more uh, incre increased road noise or anything I kind of want to get this car up to like speed maybe like 40 miles an hour just to make sure there's no uh, no alignment issues as far as I can tell I mean sure there's gonna be small alignment issues um, under the on the on the alignment rack you'll see all the small alignment issues but in person to me honestly as long as the steering wheel is driving straight I'm not seeing any crazy uh, tire wear there really isn't uh, big it really isn't a big issue for me and again the tires I have on guys man I paid hundred ninety seven dollars shipped from eBay on Black Friday in 2017 they've been holding up great and again it's just a cheap old tire so it's no big deal all right so far initial impressions are good I did notice a little bit more uh, feedback from the car on initial turn in and uh, tighter more agile responses the car does definitely seem to go where you point at it so that's good that's something we were definitely trying to improve and again stop and go traffic right now i'm gonna go ahead drive this car a little bit after we get the bolts from home depot and uh, i'll let you guys know the final thoughts all right guys final thoughts in the vehicle right now first let me show you the vehicle how it sits looks pretty good I do notice that uh, negative camber definitely you can see it when you're when you're looking at the vehicle definitely see that camber okay so real quick driving the vehicle feels good straight line the steering wheel stiffened up a little bit so it's a lot more uh, it's it's nicer it gives you more feedback turning is a lot better but i did notice that the tire noise increased not so much when you're driving straight it still did but not as much as when you're actually going into turns and in a turn then you feel like especially lower speeds kind of turns you hear that tire noise a lot more granted my tire pressure is increased right now to about 40 pounds usually i run about 35 I'm experimenting with tire pressure and steering response and feedback. So ideally the 40 pounds is a lot and it's gonna increase the tire noise, but we'll still experiment. But so far, um, I like the handling of it. I like the feedback. I'm gonna run these things for about a week or two, see how I like it. I did go to some hardware stores and I did pick up the bolts for the, sh uh, the shock bolts. These are M14 with a 1.5 millimeter pitch metric. This is what the guy gave me. Strength eight, probably not ideal, but it will work for what I needed to. I'm still gonna double check with Honda, the original bolts, how much they are. We'll probably pick those up. But I hope you guys like this video. Thank you for watching. Give us a thumbs up if this is something new or you learned something, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame Though it might be nice to own a jet plane I'ma do it all for you, come along